As long as there are softwares, there will be bugs. As long as there are bugs, there will be a need to debug them. As long as there is a need to debug them, we need logs. As long as we need logs to debug the bug, we need to implement those logs in our production system, in our system that is running. I know nobody is going to dispute that, but this is where the problem happens. And one solution to that problem is what I call it as black box debugging. Let's go ahead and talk about that. But before we go ahead, let's first talk about what is the exact problem that happens with logging. I believe if you are a software developer or someone being part of software development, you must heard about this particular statement. We need to enable logs in production to know what is actually happening. I have never ever seen any person who can fix a defect without seeing the logs. It is not possible to even understand the problem without seeing the logs. But the problem with production level logs is that they take huge amount of CPU memory as well as disk space. And you know transferring logs is additional logistic overhead. But even when somebody is okay with this, there is one more thing that happens with production level logs that is it takes time it increases the response time of the system and this is something no customer no you know product person will agree on and that's the precise reason we say that okay in production we will not enable debug logs we will just enable critical logs the definition of critical depends upon individual software developers so this is the problem and all of you if you are a software developer is facing this problem okay there is no way you can skip this problem so what we should do the solution to this is black box debugging let me tell you what i mean by black box debugging so when i say black box debugging software black box debugging i am saying that we need to have production system logs, which means our production system will generate logs. Yes, you heard it right. It will generate logs, but the logs will not be the logs what we usually write. Like, you know, entering this function, the value of this variable is this and so many things like that. We are not going to write logs like that. Black box debugging tells that, you know, these production system logs will always be enabled they will always be enabled which means that there will not be any configuration like you know whether we enable logs or we don't enable logs and now i believe you will get why i call it as black box debugging just like airplane black boxes things are not enabled or disabled there it you know stores everything all the information or you know all the information which can lead to an investigation is stored there the same logic we need to apply in our software so this will be the log which will always be enabled but it will have a small footprint it will not be large enough so that we can save cpu memory disk space as well as performance and now the biggest usp of black box debugging logs it will be encoded i will talk about what is the meaning of being encoded but in a nutshell, it means that it will not be a string which tells you which function is called. It cannot be decoded by just by looking at it. Okay, so if you take the log file, you will not be able to understand it, which means we need a decoder. This is the USP which will help all of us to write production level logs all the time. So let's first talk about what is the meaning of encoded because that is the USP and this is where things will be totally different as compared to anything else we can think of. Now when I talked about encoded logs, your log file will look something like this. It may have special characters, numbers or you know combination of characters, numbers, strings or anything you can think of but it will be encrypted and it will look something like this. So for simplicity, I have written, you know, one colon one or two or something like that. The combination of one and twos and arrows. You can come up with any encoding mechanism you like. And I will talk about one of the encoding mechanism. So you need 
to get the logs from the production system into your local system and you need to call what I call it as a decoder function. You need to call a decoder function and once you call that decoder function, here is how your logs will look like. Your logs will be readable and it will look like, you know, function x called, thread y called, value is 1000, thread z exited, function eb called. So these are the readable format and this is non-readable format and this particular decoder function it will not ship as part of the product okay it will be something which will be developed along with your product right you will be implementing a decoder function along with your product which means this can remain with you all the time or you can give it to your production support teams or maybe if agreement you know allows you to do so you can give it to your customers to understand what exactly is happening in your system. So the biggest reason for having this, you know, decoder function and having this encoded logs as part of black box debugging is that, you know, most often than not, it is somewhat difficult to solve problems by enabling debug logs. I myself have faced a situation where enabling debug logs solves the problem because it takes more time and in some of the multi-threaded scenarios, you know, if debugger function or debug logs takes more time, it will actually prevent the, you know, deadlock of some threads. So enabling debug logs may help you in simple scenarios, but in complicated scenarios, you still need to, you know, understand what is going on inside the system. And that's why you add more logs in your production system, in your production environment. If you can't enable debug log, still you need to write some logs to be able to understand it. And that is the complete idea behind black box debugging. And now let's talk about storing those logs. So all those production codes, production systems will be generating encrypted logs and logs will be stored in databases. And all the databases where you want to store the log should be having a time series property. You can either create it or use a time series database. And you can keep the log there and once needed, decode as required, okay? So you do not need to decode all the logs. You will decode or you want to decode only in the cases where there is some problem or you want to see the system behavior. Now, the biggest thing in this particular scheme of things is your decoder. The success of this black box debugging depends upon a decoder. So if you are having a flexibility of decoder, generate a decoder which can, you know, just take the logs, generate some graphical user interface and it just limited to your creativity, how good you can create it. Remember, this is also part and parcel of the product. Don't treat this particular thing as something, you know, totally separate. No, it's a part and parcel of your product. Only then you will be successful in having a very nice debugging mechanism, okay? So let's talk about one example, how you can do that. So uh, let's say there are three functions, you know, three nested functions. You can have a, you know, variable like, you know, int i. If only first nested function or nested condition is called, you just initialize it to one. If the second nested function or nested condition is called, you just increment it to, you know, three. If the, you know, second nested or function or condition is called, you can increment it to, you know, one plus three plus, you know, five or seven. You can come up with any scheme based on your nested conditions. And in the log, you will just write, let's assume it is seven, you will just write seven in the logs. What is the meaning of this seven? will be known by decoder. Decoder will say that seven means condition one gets called, condition two gets called and condition three gets called. This is a very simple example of encoding, but you got a gist of it, how you can come up with the encoding. How you want to create your encoding is up to you, whether you want to use a bitmap or some permutation combination of numbers, you can do that. Only thing please avoid doing is adding any string in there apart from, you know, some necessary things like arrow or something you want to represent that okay so it's totally up to you how good you can create it it's up to you and believe me once you are gonna create something like black box debugging infrastructure in your system in your product you will get 
much 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 more logs in the running production system with the same performance parameters as you get with only enabling critical logs. With black box debugging you are saving your disk space, your CPU, your memory but at the same time you are also getting hell lot of logs as compared to your critical logs which helps you to understand your system in a better way. Okay. So I hope and believe that I have explained the concept of software black box debugging in the best possible way and I do believe that you have understood the concept and I do hope that you are going to make use of it for the benefit of your own product or your own system or your own software. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. We will meet again. Until the next time we meet, good day, goodbye. You take care.